So Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. Everyone is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life thinking it's stupid. That brings us to the Indian education system. India's education system is a one-size-fits-all kind of deal, but how are students who all have different strengths, different needs and passions expected to fit? Now, now, if a doctor was to prescribe the exact same medicine to every single one of his patients, wouldn't it be a disaster? I had a friend once tell me she loved the subject chemistry and was quite unhappy she couldn't take it up as one of her subjects in the 11th grade. And when I asked her why, she said it was because she always scored low in it. Now, why does getting a bad mark limit our learning? Unfortunately, the reality for many students is that they, is that they don't take up certain, certain classes for the fear it would bring down their academic average. By doing this, students compromise their own learning just to get a certain grade. It seems like school's sole preoccupation is to determine who can follow the curriculum the best. We, as young people, are taught to memorize information found in textbooks, only to regurgitate it on next week's test paper before forgetting all about it. How can we believe that standardized tests are what accurately measure a student's growth or achievements? How can we attach a number to that moment a second grader has the ability to write his own name, but is now being called a failure years down the line for failing grade 9 math? We somehow adapted this false perspective that those who have good grades are better, smarter, and more capable than the ones who don't. We as students want to believe that our marks don't define us and that we're more than just our grade. But it doesn't ever feel that way. Even though some students might be passionate about their learning or have an inventive mind, if they underperform on these tests, organizations will refuse to even consider them. So it doesn't matter if a student is a gifted artist, a loving caretaker, a talented musician, or a poetic writer. These students are the fish being judged on how they climb trees, because everyone says the end-all be-all is college, or we're leaving students to the lowest skill level work. They, the system also says forget teaching students about taxes, loans, credit, debt because it's not as rigorous as factoring trinomials or trigonometric identities, so it can't fit. Innova innovation is sprinting forward in ways none of us can even imagine. Every structured job in the economy, if it hasn't disappeared already, will most probably disappear. So kids coming through the education system, simply trained to follow instructions and jump through hoops, are the kids that are going to be margin marginalized or chronically unemployed. And that's not 10 kids we're talking about, or 100 kids. That's millions of kids. According to me, India's education system today has robbed us of its very purpose, which was to make us learn. India's teaching methodology is highly monotonous. Researchers at the College of William and Mary showed that the creativity among students is on the decline. And an increased amount of students merely learn just a minimum, just to get the desired grade. Since 1990, children have become less, capable, less able to produce unique and unusual ideas. The objective of education is to educate and empower people to achieve success, to achieve success in their des desired field. Not every kid wants to become a doctor or an engineer when they grow up, and that's completely OK. Under our unemployment is another result of our education system. So. Um, with the high levels of youth unemployment, you must think that, a la that the last thing an employer has to worry about is finding sharp and creative minds. But the reality is, four out of ten employers say that they cannot find the skills needed for even entry-level positions from the current youth. One in two children around the world don't feel like their education prepared them to find a job. The skills employers value are often diametrically opposed to the skills taught in, an education, uh, in institutes. Did you know only 2% of India's workforce is considered skilled? 
even after being armed with university degrees, an overwhelming majority of the youth is deemed unemployable, owing this to the lack of connect between what they are taught at colleges and the industry requirements. This all circles right back to education. If the Indian education system continues to trap young minds in the box of a curriculum, innovation will stagnate because schools are killing the curiosity, creativity and desire to learn. We need to teach the kids of today to tomorrow go on to solve bigger real world problems like poverty, war, hunger, climate change, discrimination or maybe even just making sure the students of tomorrow are getting enough sleep, enough food to eat and that they're showing up to school. New evidence shows that the combination of women empowerment and education that includes everyone, especially the 132 million out of school girls across the developing world would result in an 85 gigaton reduction of carbon dioxide by 2050. By these estimates, leveraging the power of education is potentially more powerful than solely increasing investments in onshore wind turbines or concentrated solar power alone. Education should not just be given for our career, but for our lives too. Statistics of a girl child in India are terrifying and they increase the need to educate girls about things unrelated to a career at all. Girls in unprivileged areas need to be taught about things like how the social system is cruel and gives them less of everything and that it is unfair. They need to learn to stand up for themselves because together we need to build a world where everyone can feel safe and wanted. At the surface, a lot of people blame the teachers for being responsible for a child failing in the standard education system. But the truth is, teachers are stuck in the same education system that was imposed on us. They have to rush through the syllabus in time for the exams and don't get a chance to properly make sure everything is understood by every single student because they don't have a choice. But according to me, there is something very important that a teacher can control and that is making an impact on a student's life. Inspiring students and teaching them life skills on becoming better people, even if it's just inside the classroom. I have had teachers who have created such huge impacts on my life. They have taught me to be kind, caring, helping, and compassionate. They taught me it's okay to make mistakes, and these are the lessons that will stick with me for life, and these are the teachers I will never forget. A supportive teacher can make an unimaginable difference in a child's life, where everyone around them is calling them a failure. In the name of education, the aspect of learning cannot be diminished. Instead of being facilitators, we are often altering the very nature of a child's inherent attitude towards learning. I am hopeful that sooner rather than later, we will find the willingness to willingness and the courage to focus on the students and support the teachers to make a difference. It is also important to change our perspective on what things like grades really mean and to realize that numbers cannot define a student's potential or intelligence. We need to change the system that is seemingly designed only to produce doctors and engineers to encourage students to recognize their own strengths and teach them how to excel in an area of their choice. We need schools to teach students how to think, how to learn, and how to innovate, not how to take tests. And when we can achieve this, that will be when we can truly inspire the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you.